Hey guys, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about digital audio workstations. I know a lot of you are working in video editing software like Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve or maybe Adobe Premiere, and you can definitely get great audio out of these programs. But I think by integrating a DAW into your workflow, you might get a little bit more refined control over your sound and be able to come up with even better results. So I'd like to go over what I look for in the software that I'm using and help you narrow down what might work even better in your workflow. Now, there are a lot of DAWs out there, and they each have their own strengths, they each have their own weaknesses, and depending on what kind of content you're working on and what your workflow is, you might prefer one over the other. Most people are already familiar with Avid's Pro Tools or Apple Logic Pro, but there are a lot of other pieces of software out there. You have Ableton Live, there's Blackmagic Design integrating Fairlight into their DaVinci Resolve software, there's Harrison Mixbus, there's Presonus Studio One, there are free things like Audacity or maybe garage band that comes with Apple's software, and even obscure things like Merging Technologies Pyramix, which I've literally never seen used, but it seems to be one of the most capable music-centered DAWs out there. And there are a lot of open source softwares too, which I think the most popular one is probably Reaper. The point is, there are a lot of pieces of software out there, but not all of them are really suited as well to working with sound for picture or doing post-production. So I'd say you can probably stay away from Presonus Studio One, Ableton Live, Audacity, as much as I love Audacity, I actually got started working on Audacity like 20 years ago, that was my first DAW. They really aren't tailored to picture workflows, they're more about manipulating audio specifically. Something like Pyramix is so specific that it really only suits large-scale music operations, and Cubase, as great of a piece of music software as it is, it's not really suited for post-production either, so I'd say we can leave those out of the consideration entirely. Now, if you're already working within Adobe's ecosystem and using Premiere, the thing that probably makes the most sense is going to be Audition. And it's a little bit more full-featured in its audio workflows than Premiere is, and the translation between the two softwares is really great, since they're made by the same company. It also is really good at handling sort of smaller amounts of audio really quickly, so rather than using something really robust like Logic or Pro Tools, you can load things up into Audition and just go fast. I used to work for Clear Channel and iHeartMedia, and for a lot of their content that they needed turned around fast, Adobe Audition was a great solution for that because we could load up small amounts of audio and get through them very quickly and send them off for deliverables. It's not great for more complex workflows that require a lot of deliverables or a lot of iterations, but it's a really good bridge between having almost no control over your audio and being way too deep in over your head to, to be able to manage everything quickly and efficiently. Outside of the Adobe ecosystem, the next closest application to Audition would probably be Reaper, and they're sort of an independent, more open source piece of software that allows a lot of the same things and is built around that same sort of speed. You load it up, you're able to get sound out really quickly, and you're able to iterate things really well, so you can design, you know, 10 or 20 or 100 different elements of audio very fast. Again, it's not able to handle super complex projects, especially against picture. I think it's a little bit more tailored towards, say, podcasting or radio or maybe music. But again, it's a really robust piece of software and it's pretty cheap. I want to say it's like 60 bucks for an individual license. After that, in terms of price point, you're probably going to find Logic Pro and Harrison Mixbus. Now, Harrison may not be a household name, but they're actually one of the companies that was responsible for some of the best large format consoles that the world has ever seen. And they're actually still in use on a number of really big feature stages around Hollywood. The Harrison software is incredibly similar to what software these boards ran on. So for anybody who has had large format console experience or wants to have that experience in their DAW, that's kind of an interesting place to look. I wouldn't say it's the most intuitive thing to work with, and it's it doesn't make as much sense to me because I'm so used to other software, but it does all of the things that you'd want for post-production. If you're already familiar with console channel strips, it does make a lot of sense in how things are organized. And weirdly enough, Harrison as a digital audio workstation actually has a better sound to it than some other pieces of software. As you start really experimenting with these things in tuned environments, software has different sounds just straight out of the box. I mean, you can EQ and you can process and whatever, but in terms of just stock software, Harrison actually sounds better to my ears in a tuned space than maybe Pro Tools does or maybe Logic does, which 
Subjective, obviously, but kind of interesting. And speaking of logic, I'd say that's where the bar kind of gets drawn between all the stuff that's a little bit more obscure or maybe not as widely used and the big familiar names that you'll see in a lot of studios, regardless of whether they're music or post or whatever. Logic is a really full-featured DAW. It is not tuned to work on picture as well as some of the others, but in terms of musical workflows, in terms of just getting into content and it all makes sense and you're able to have really, really powerful control over everything, Logic is great. And the price point is also pretty great. Logic has a lot of really powerful sound design tools in it and allows you to compose as well as edit sound effects in sync with picture. So it really provides a robust feature set and granular control over audio in ways pretty much every other video editor really can't do because it's not designed to do that. That's why these audio workstations are so important to integrate. Logic is also extremely flexible in terms of workflow and software navigation. You can customize any of the functions in the program to whatever hotkeys you feel most comfortable with. And I rely on hotkeys a lot to be able to navigate really fast around the sessions that I'm working in. Also, it's really well integrated with Apple's Final Cut software. So if you're working within Final Cut and you need much more control over your audio, it's kind of like Adobe Premiere and Adobe Audition in terms of seamless transition. You can really easily get your stuff out of Final Cut into Logic and get really, really specific with your audio. Beyond Logic, the sort of number two most fully featured audio post-production software out there is Steinberg's Nuendo. Now, Nuendo is sort of picked up a lot in single-person operations, and it seems like a lot of commercial production houses as well. So it's really widely used, but it's, it's sort of in siloed situations. It is a fantastic piece of software for audio post-production specifically. It's got a really full feature set from all of the other softwares that I've already mentioned, and then adds to that as well to be much more tightly integrated with picture editorial. You know, multiple videos in multiple tracks and being able to have rudimentary control over those things, as well as incredibly detailed control over your audio. The way it navigates sound libraries natively it doesn't really have a competitor in any of the other pieces of software that works as well. You'd have to buy something third party in order to get that integration with pretty much any other DAW. Getting even more complex with things like internal audio routing or deliverables creation, a lot of feature films and television have to deliver foreign language versions. So being able to say, I want all of my English language dialogue out and leave everything else exactly the same, software like Duendo really makes that easy. And then creating all of the stems of of here's just the sound effects, here's just the backgrounds, here's just the music, here's just the dialogue. It makes it really straightforward to create all that stuff without having to, you know, manage all kinds of audio assets and get really disorganized. And software like Logic does allow you to do similar things, but it's not quite as intuitive and it's not purpose-built for that sort of functionality like Nuendo is. Additionally, in one of my other videos, I talked about kind of the, the reliance on OMF and AAF export and import capabilities. Nuendo has the ability to spit both of those things out and take them in, so working across softwares is much more easily facilitated with that. That being said, Nuendo can be pretty expensive, especially if you're just starting out, and very complicated in its workflow. They don't really offer an entry-level version of the software to, to kind of get familiar with. And going beyond that, they haven't really been adopted by any of the major studios like Avid's Pro Tools has. Pro Tools is, bar none, the industry standard for audio post-production in the world. I'd love to be able to make the case for something like Logic or Nuendo being, you know, the most awesome thing to use. But if you're looking to really get deep into audio, collaborate with audio teams and, you know, getting to that point of, of distributing on a domestic or international level with content, you're going to run into Pro Tools at some point. And there's good reason for that. Pro Tools, while it may not be the best at handling really quick, fast, I need this done right now kinds of stuff with small amounts of audio, when you have a hugely complex project like a feature film or a TV show or a short film or a documentary, it makes it really, really accessible and intuitive to have all of that complex routing and have a lot of things going on at once and still make it manageable to the user. Pro Tools is definitely its own beast. You cannot use VST or audio unit plugins without some kind of plugin wrapper that kind of serves as a bridge between those architectures. You have to use Avid's own AAX plugin format in order to work within it. 
It's also not exactly one of those get up and go kinds of software where you can just open it up, throw some audio in and you're off. It requires a little bit of setup and the learning curve is kind of steep. But I think one of the biggest components that's caused it to be adopted so widely is stability. If you're running a dub stage that has 10 Pro Tools systems synced together running 2000 tracks of audio to make the soundscape for a massive motion picture, Pro Tools is really the only piece of software that is capable of doing that reliably on a wide level. I'd say Nuendo is a close second with those capabilities, but it would take so much to transition over to a different piece of software at the major level that nobody's really willing to invest that kind of cost because what they've got already works, and so it's sort of an established, again, industry standard. That being said, some of the crazier concerns of working on higher budget content where they deliver five different versions of picture over the course of a week that change rapidly and you have to conform, you know, 100 to 300 tracks of audio to whatever new changes have been made by the cutting room. Pro Tools allows you to do that relatively easily. Pro Tools allows you to have multiple video files in the session, whereas a lot of other pieces of software don't. So say on an episodic television show where you've got the same locations across the entire season of TV, you can load up every single one of the seasons in the same session and just say, oh, I've got these same backgrounds from, you know, this police bullpen, and they're going to be used in this next episode too. I'm just going to copy and paste those so it stays consistent across the show, and the creative decisions that were made in the first couple of episodes, maybe, can be retained for the next, I don't know, 20 seasons of, I don't know, NCIS. And probably equally important, the mixing workflow in Pro Tools is really, really robust. You can pretty much do anything you need to, and anything you can think of doing, with Pro Tools' mixing capabilities. It's definitely a deep dive piece of software, and I think there are a lot of other solutions for people who don't need that level of complexity that will work fantastically. But when it comes to the most in-depth, you know, major motion picture Hollywood level projects, Pro Tools is what you're going to find. So with all that in mind, I'd say if you're working within the Adobe ecosystem already, or you don't necessarily need to be working against picture all the time, if you're working in radio or podcasting or audiobooks or any kind of spoken word in that sense, Adobe Audition is probably going to be the most feature-rich and easily navigable piece of software that you can get your hands on without breaking the bank. I also think Reaper is a great alternative to that. It's streamlined, it's fast, it can handle a bunch of audio really quickly and efficiently, and it's great to load up when you don't necessarily have to work against picture. If you're working within Final Cut Pro or you're doing any kind of music composition for a picture, I think Logic is probably the best bet that you can get in terms of generating audio content and working in sync with video. And there's a lot of translation between Final Cut Pro and Logic, obviously, plus pretty much every feature that you'd need to get sound in sync and sounding great exists in Logic Pro. It's a fantastic piece of software. But if your goal is to either work professionally in the audio side of things or get really familiar with sort of more expansive picture and audio workflows that you'd find in major motion pictures or high budget television or things of that nature, Pro Tools is the one to be familiar with. I also do want to make special mention of another piece of software that kind of bridges all of these gaps, and that is DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic. DaVinci is a really interesting piece of software because they started as a color grading software that was kind of industry standard, and they tacked on a video editor to the, the front end of it and an audio editor to the back end of it. The video editor is pretty robust. I use it to cut all these YouTube videos, and I really like it. It's not the most flexible thing in the world. I'm not going to be able to get the same things I would out of it versus, you know, Avid Media Composer, but it works fantastically for what I need, and also it's free. On top of that, Blackmagic purchased a company called Fairlight, which was kind of a major competitor to the Nuendo and Pro Tools softwares of the world, and they're integrating it into DaVinci. It's not ready for the big leagues yet, in my personal opinion. It, it still has a lot of integration to go, but I'm really curious where it's going to go because it seems like an awesome idea, and having that whole pipeline in one piece of software could be really, really cool down the line. So if you want kind of a bridge between all of these things and you want a good representation of each one of the pieces of the workflow, I actually think DaVinci is my number one choice for anybody who is not having to specifically work in audio or specifically work only in picture. 
So hopefully this video gives you a better idea of some of the options that are out there and helps narrow down what might be a good or a better fit for the workflow that you've got. Comment below and tell me what you're using and what you like about it. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, come follow me over on Instagram at AXK, and thanks for watching.